and I think it's so different now, I think, because for so long, like just in hip hop or rap, I think like the goal of artists was to be the best, most talented, like art rapper, like ever. That mm -hmm. was like, and I think it's like shifted where like that doesn't matter. I think they went from, I think rappers went from making music for hip hop heads to trying to appeal to as many people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And like, instead of kind of being polarizing, like as talented as Eminem was, he, a lot of his success at the beginning was because it was polarizing people. Some people hated the content and that just like drew more interest. He didn't try to appeal to everybody. He purposefully didn't want to appeal to a certain audience. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, I think it, rappers in particular i think pop music has always kind of tried to be super kind of mellow and in the middle and try to appeal to everybody pc yeah yeah and mm -hmm. it, a lot of hip-hop has gotten to that and there's always been certain you know spots of hip-hop that were like the fun dance party songs that but like in terms of like the rappers like i could not tell you one like like the underground scene and like battle rappers. Like when I was in middle school and like high school, like a long time ago now, but like I, there were like, it was a separate scene of underground rappers who wanted to be the best rappers. That's it. They didn't care about being on the radio. And like, I don't know if I'm just old and out of touch, but like, it seems that hip hop has become more of like pop music. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Cause we dominate, we dominate. We the number one genre. We the number one genre, and what you just described is absolutely correct. It's evolution, you know? And because of the internet, man, we have, it's so easy to access anything that you want to hear. Yeah. The underground battle raps, they still out there. They still there. That's never really existed on the mainstream platform anyway. That's true. Well, and now I'm wondering, and in, in such a PC world that we live in, 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 you know, a great battle rap line might be really offensive in like, you know yeah but that's the point so like now i'm wondering do you see a lot of like we see a lot of comedians getting in in trouble now getting canceled mm -hmm. like has some of that i wonder if some rappers are like afraid to be like oh i can't use that line yeah i mean but you you can't use certain lines yeah you know what i mean like you you just got to be careful you got to follow <clears throat> you got to follow the ways of the world and understand how to read the room you yeah. know what i mean so this is how i always look at it as a creator I look at it like there's, there's targets that I'm trying to hit. If I'm creatively not trying to offend you and you get offended, that's not your fault. That's my fault. I miss my, I miss my shot. Mm -hmm. It could just be slightly to the left that I missed the bullseye, but I try to hit the bullseye every time. If I want to offend you and you get offended, <laughs> then boom, mission accomplished. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Some rappers are subliminal. Some people are too sensitive. Mm -hmm. You have to consider all of these things when you're creating. And if you know, and if it, if controversy is your thing, you got a such thing as good controversy and bad controversy. There was a point in time where we got told that all press is good press. Uh -huh. well, that's not true. Not anymore. No, no, <laughs> that's not true. That's not. There's some people. There's some people from a moral standpoint that you don't want to offend. Right and wrong. Period. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you know you. You, you you walk in, you tread in water on, on sensitive lines. Don't fucking say it. You know what I mean? Because it's almost like if I'm doing an interview with you and you tell me I can't curse, I don't lead the interview and be like, yo, he ain't going to let me curse. It's like, bro, I have enough words in my lexicon to where I can fucking speak without fucking cursing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. So it's like, it's like, I'm not going to play myself. I'm not going to limit myself. There's some platforms that if I go sit on, I may not watch Wendy Williams all the time. But when I did her show, yo, I respected the platform and I was honored to do it. Right. You know what I mean? I, I realize it's a mainstream platform. Mainstream media has never really been cool to me. You know what I mean? But it's necessary because I went on there to talk about an album that was my, that was my, um, self-defining album called book of ryan and i wanted as many people as possible to get the message that i was sending because i felt like that it would touch people i felt like that it would help people yeah. so i felt like the mainstream is not always the enemy 
You know what I mean? It just depends on how you use it. If you utilize the platform to do something that is good, then cool. If you utilize it to make a fool of yourself, then, you know, that's kind of you. You know what I mean? Yep. Well, I think um, that's a really good point. I think it's almost like, you know, when an actor, when they're like going for the Oscar, they like literally have to campaign for it. They mm -hmm. have to, they have to go kind of play the game and as much yeah. as they don't want to like they got to go shake the hands and kiss the babies and you know and some people are some people are good at it some people are good at it and look forward to it yeah I admire those people I feel I feel like that's a talent you know oh, it absolutely is and I think yeah. and nowadays like with the as much content as there is on YouTube and Instagram like as many people like Wiz Khalifa because he's funny mm -hmm. and because he seems like a cool guy as much as another audience likes his music like mm -hmm. now more than ever you can kind of be an if you, you're giving an average musician but if you're a cool person people yeah. will still just they just like you and he's a weed smoker yeah it's, right right weed, weed is weed is like the equalizer bro it's the equalizer you know what i mean i yeah, wish right. i wish you know i'm sober so right i don't touch any stimulant any stimulant and i don't drink you know what i mean so but I always look at my, my little brother's a wee head and, and people love him, man. <laughs> people love him because you look at Snoop. Yeah. Oh, who yes. Or who is more adored than Snoop in hip hop? I am a big hip hop fan and I love Snoop. And I could not tell you the name of maybe his last four albums. And but that don't matter. Right. Don't exactly. matter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like perfect example. And like <laughs> Snoop is probably one of the most famous people on earth the most recognizable <laughs> he has to be the most recognizable but think about how much branding he's doing you know what i mean like that man can sell anything man like i just i admire that I'm, i admire somebody who can start they can start their platform at such a street level you know he was a straight up gang member oh yeah caught a murder case man you don't even think about that no more he, yeah, right. he, he almost went to prison for a <laughs> people well, forget about that <laughs> and it's like now it's just snoop it's just snoop yeah. dog dog man you can put him in, you can put him in the white house man he could stand next to joe biden and he wouldn't look out of place well and one of the things this is tying back to like wendy williams or like a mainstream media snoop dog at at 10 o'clock in the morning snoop dog could do wendy williams and talk to like that audience then he could go and talk to like some young guys from the you know street, yeah. the streets and he could talk to straight up gang members on a corner right. and he then get out on any corner in any state in the country. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. and he'll know how to. It's not like he changes who he is. He just knows his audience. Mm -hmm. and, like he could talk to like you know the the guys on the street, and then he could talk to my mom, and both of them would love. Him. You know who else was like that? Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur, man, he didn't he didn't break himself up into into different people. He didn't say, "Yo, I'm gonna make my chick record now," and I'm gonna make, uh -huh. "Yo, man," he'd be right in the middle of rapping to the girls on a song, and then he'd just start dissing somebody. Like he just didn't get, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Pop was Pop, you know? Did you ever meet him? Nah, he was a, he was just a little before my time. When I when I jumped out there, he was he had already passed, unfortunately. You know, I didn't get to meet him or Big, um, but they were like. You know, in high school, that's that's I was. Oh yeah, I worshipped him in high school. Yeah. You know, so. I think a, a lot of people forget he was like from Baltimore, right? And then he like got Pac, Pac was a. Uh, I want to say Pac was from like Jersey or New York, and then he moved out west. Yeah, he also stayed in the Bay for a period of time as well. Yeah, and then like when he got out of jail, like Suge Knight got him out of jail, right? And then all this, then like boom, you're on death row, like right now, because like. That's part of something. I believe like it was something. It was something like that. I don't like to misquote him, but I, yeah, I believe it was something, some similar, some, some close to that. It's really interesting how, like, when you think of West Coast rap, you probably think of N.W.A. and Tupac and, and Snoop and Snoop. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, and Pac for being so well known for that area he isn't even from there, and like he already had a bit of a career before he got there, but. He had he, he yeah he had an amazing career before he got there because he was already acting. Yep. Um. He he was doing. He already had a couple classic albums under his belt too. That's arguable, but I I feel like they were all classics. You know, I could just be a pop stand though. But well, that I mean, you can see that change in his sound when like you know he met Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden he was like, man, this West Coast sound is 
is like something I can make my own in a way and dope. I mean, yeah, that's where California Love came from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was originally a Dr. Dre song. And um, I think they convinced him to give it to pop. And that's how they ended up on the song with each other. Was that the first one they ever did? I don't know if, if it's the first one that they did, but I think it's the first one that they released prior prior to Pac's release from, from prison. That's got to be the top five best hip hop song of all time. Got it. Yo, man, everything, everything Dr. Dre <laughs> just turns into a lifelong attachment. Yeah. I'm attached to his entire body of work. Oh, yo.